I was waiting just a minute to see if some old folks had come in before I started service. And uh, some have said, I didn't know we were having visitors singing to us tonight and preaching for us. And, and I said, well, uh, yeah. Well, when did this get scheduled? I said, I seen them driving down the interstate, flagged them down, said, you're going the wrong way. So they said they'd come over and have church with us tonight. And I'm glad. Now, that's just a story, folks. You all know that. I didn't do that at all. But uh, we're glad to have them uh, coming our way, the Crusaders, this evening to sing and, and uh, to share the Word of God with us this evening. And I'm glad that you're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that you're all here today. And I want you to stand with us all over the sanctuary. Let's go to God in prayer. And uh, we're, we're expecting, every time we come to the house of God, uh, I, I've, I've admonished it here more as of late, but every time we come to the house of God, I believe that we need not to come because of habit, but because we're coming into the presence of the Lord and we're expecting to, to find Him here in His house and then we're going to worship Him and praise Him. And because we do, then His presence will touch our souls and He will supply whatever our need is. How many knows tonight that He is the source of everything that we need. Everything, it doesn't make any difference what it is with our life. He is the source. If anything good has happened to us at all, it's because we're serving a good God. So I want you to pray tonight and worship Him. Invite His blessing on the service. And then we're going to put this service right into the hands of the crusaders tonight. Father, we come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come, Father, because... Lord, your love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You loved us first, showed us your love, God. And tonight, Lord, we've come into this house, Lord, to worship you. Praise you, God, tonight, Lord, for the benefits, Lord, that we receive from you, Lord, this, this night. And I ask you, God, as we give you praise, that you would move in a mighty way. Children on our singers and, and the preaching tonight, God, that you will just anoint everything that's said and done. Lord, that our hearts might be lifted up to sit in that heavenly place, Lord. God, we ask all of these things, and we give you praise for tonight in Jesus' name. And the church would give a big amen. 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 Would you remain standing, and let's sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that sings.
on, let's sing that first verse again. And amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but vision of Jesus, why aren't you giving praise in thy house? I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a ranch like me. I heard about his stony of his precious blood's atoning then i repented of my sin and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and i heard about those streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood and he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing sing the chorus again oh victory in jesus come on church my, my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me me to victory beneath the cleansing flood and he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood amen come on give jesus some praise yep. amen. Praise have you thought about those verses that course where it says he sought me yep. aren't you glad that he sought you are you glad that he didn't give up on you? Yes. I say that again. Aren't you glad he didn't give up on us? Amen. He said he sought me and he bought me. Come on. See, you're paid for with a price. And that price wasn't cheap. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so when we sing that song, if you'll sing it like you got victory, if you'll sing it like you've got victory, it'll change your life. Because once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a victorious now, it didn't say that everything's going to be peaches and cream down here. 
In this life there will be some tribulation, but greater is he greater is he that's in the me than he that's in this what? This old world down here. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. And he loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Come on, give Jesus praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you desire. You don't have to. You just worship the Lord tonight. Amen. I am so thankful to be in church on Wednesday night. Hello. There's about 10 of you that are. We're praise the Lord. We're going to have church tonight, not because we're here, but because Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. Do you know that the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also? Yeah. That ought to get you excited right there. And he's the same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm like a cat out of the cage tonight, Pastor. You just don't know what you did by allowing us to come. Uh, I'm just excited about Jesus Christ. I pray if you've never met Jesus Christ personally in your life tonight, that you've never met him as your Lord and Savior, I pray before this night is over with that that pew won't contain you and that you'll call upon the mighty name of Jesus and be saved. Amen. Because it's because of that old rugged cross. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies last I lay down and I will clean Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame, and I love that old cross with a deep.
through the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call to travel on you know the Lord has been so good to me I feel 
feel like traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Yes, my heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise in this house. I'm excited about him. I don't care where he carries me to because I know I've got a heavenly home that's awaiting on me. Amen. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm a little bit excited about Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, I've read the back of the book, and guess who wins? Amen. When you know Jesus, we win because he's victorious. Amen? Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled tonight to be here. I, I'm going to tell you, I've been looking forward to this ever since I talked to Brother Bob, and, and I, I, I told him I'm so thankful. I take it very seriously. When you stand up here, and you stand up here in front of a... God's people, you better have a word. You better have something to say. You better not get up here and be floundering around. You better be serious about the gospel of Jesus Christ because he was serious about us. Amen. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that I serve a risen Savior. There ain't no bones in the tomb. Hello? The tomb's empty. I said the tomb's empty. And I'm, I'm thankful that he's coming again very soon. Can I tell you, I'm looking forward to that day. But there's so much to be done yet. As a church, there's so much that we need to be doing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of lost folks that's within a mile of this church. There's a lot of lost folks within a mile of every church. It's time that we, as believers, that we spread the good news. We don't need to be messing around, as the old feller used to say. We need to be serious. So I'm serious tonight to tell you that he's coming. And he's coming soon. And he's coming to get a bride that's prepared and adorned. I pray that you're ready. I pray that you got your lamps trimmed and they're burning. And you're looking. You're looking tonight. Oh, wouldn't it be something to wake up in heaven? <laughs> wouldn't it be great to just be at the feet of Jesus and hear those words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, as my friend says, what a day. What a day that's going to be. Well, I, I want to introduce everybody to you. I, I think you know most of us. It, it looks a little different up here from the last time that we was here. It looks a little different at home, too. We got a grandbaby now. And, uh, and so I was sharing with uh, Brother Bob that John, Jonathan, our son, he's learned what the real world is now, being a daddy, you know, and, and sometimes when you can't figure out why they're crying. And uh, Mama looks at you and says, I don't know what else to do. And he looks back and says, well, I certainly don't know what to do. And then they finally just quit crying. You know how that is. And then he has to get up and go to work now, and uh, and so. But we're we're, we're excited about that, uh, about what God is doing, and brought us Tatum, Olivia. She's three and a half months old, isn't that right? Yeah. And uh, we got to see her uh, last Friday, and so uh, we're just uh, you know, pops gets excited now. And uh, Penny said, "What are you getting up for? They just come in the door." I said, "There's something over there I want to see." <laughs> And uh, so I, I'm just thrilled. And standing here beside me is my best friend, my ministry partner, the love of my life. And uh, she got up off of the front pew. She sat on the front pew for many years, Pastor. And uh, back in November when John and Ashley came off the road, uh, I was up here singing. And she asked me one time, she said, Would it help you if I got up there with you? And I said, Yes. <laughs> 
And so she's been up here ever since, and I'm thrilled that she is. And would you make my wife, Penny Talley, welcome tonight? And this is my baby girl. And it's, when we're up this way, it's always a thrill. She comes and sings with us. And uh, I try to twist on her arm, but, you know, they got jobs and college and all that kind of stuff, and they just won't get on that bus, you know. They'll just wave at us when we leave, Pastor. But uh, she comes and sings with us, and I'm thrilled about that. And she's also, her, her and Scott are giving us our second grandchild coming in February, so we're excited about that. So would you make my daughter Amber Bird welcome tonight? Yeah. And this bean pole over here standing beside me. And uh, he, uh, you know, he used to hide Pastor back there behind all them computer screens. Uh, and God dealt with him. <laughs> Told him, get off Facebook, son. <laughs> and uh, so Stephen uh, was off the road for a few months, came back in December of last year, got back on the bus, and uh, jumped up here. And uh, he's doing a good job singing. I, I appreciate his heart. Uh, he also preaches. Uh, and uh, so would you make Mr. Stephen Hayes welcome? And my son-in-law is here. He's sitting down here on the front row. And uh, I'm thrilled that he's here. And uh, he's about to finish school coming up in December. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and so uh, I, I'm excited to have my family with me tonight. And... Uh, and so it, it is a joy to serve the Lord. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's, that's where it's at. It's in Him. I'm like Paul. I've learned to be content. I'm like Peter. I've come to believe and know in whom I trust. It's Him. It's Jesus Christ. When you wake up in the morning, who do you think about? When you go to bed at night, who are you thinking about? Your heart ought to be on heavenly things. You ought to have a heavenly vision is what you ought to have. See, because the things of this earth are going to pass away. I'm looking there's nothing like feeling the arms of Jesus just go around you and as a young boy a lot of times I can remember growing up that if you got scared or something you'd want to go run and get in your parents' arms because that was a safe place to be can I tell you, there's no greater place to be than in the arms of Jesus. Some of us just need to climb up into his lap. Back in August when we were out in California, we were doing a revival at a church in San Francisco area. And the last night of that revival, the pastor of the church had, was standing before the congregation. And he said these words after... We'd had a wonderful meeting that night and just God had just shown himself so real. Folks had been praying in the altar and seeking God and getting things right in their life and just before he dismissed the pastor, he looked at one of the men in the church. He said, Brother Ron said, God knows. He looked across and called out another lady's name and he said I want to tell you God knows I was sitting on the front pew down here beside Penny and he looked at me and he said now brother Tally God knows can I tell you tonight he knows where you're at he knows what you're going through God began to give me this song it's entitled he said I know She was only 12 years old Out on her own 
thinking that nobody cared for her wondering if the night would ever turn to day then she heard a voice strongly say he said I church every time praying that the Lord would heal her son wondering if the Lord had ever heard her prayers and then she heard a voice say to her he said, I know the pain you feel. He said, I know the hurt. said I know the pain you feel he said I know the hurt is real he said I know you feel so
It's hard to see. So just be faithful and follow where he leads. Because greater is the one who's in us than he who's in the world. So child of God, remember the best. Is there anybody here who's seen his power? Anybody here walk through the fire? Come on and say amen. Anybody here found joy in the middle of sorrow? Peace and the storm, hope for tomorrow. I've seen it time and time.
That ought to be our prayer. Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to serve you. How many songs can be sung? There's not enough notes to tell the story about Jesus Christ. There's some great songs that have been penned. I think about the verse, and it is well with my soul. That verse that says, Oh, the bless of that glorious day. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I'll bear it no more. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. There's some great songs out there. We sung, we started with one tonight, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound that saved this old Arkansas boy, old ranch like me. I want to ask you tonight, do you have a passion for Jesus Christ? There's a lot of people today that say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, but there's no passion in their walk. There's, if you will... There's no meat to what they say. So I ask you, are you passionate about Jesus Christ? And you'd say to me tonight, well, it's Wednesday night and I'm at church. So I must be passionate about it. Because we surprised you. You didn't know that we were going to be here. So I know you didn't come for us. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you came for the Lord tonight. But I'm asking you this question because if you're passionate about Jesus Christ, He's going to tell you to do some things he's going to instruct you to do some things and you're going to turn to him and you're going to say who me you want me to do that you have your bibles tonight turn to the book of acts chapter 9 in just a few moments we're going to begin reading at verse 10 this is the account of saul of tarsus on the Damascus Road and where he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. A life-changing event. Some things happened. And so when I ask you, are you passionate about Jesus Christ? Because if you commit to say that you're passionate about Jesus Christ and you have a passion, then you're automatically, if you're passionate for Jesus Christ, you're going to have a passion for lost people. Because you cannot be passionate about Jesus Christ and not have a compassion for lost people. It doesn't work that way because once you meet Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want to tell everybody what He's done for you. You want to, you want to go and you want to share it abroad. You want, to, you want to carry it to places that you never thought you would. You want to talk to people that you never thought you would. And because when you tell me that you're passionate... The old saying is, let's sit down together and in 10 minutes you'll tell me what you're passionate about because you're going to talk about it. It's time we get passionate about Jesus Christ. If you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Acts chapter 9, begin reading at verse 10. We know at this point Saul was blinded and he was sent to a house and he began to pray and he had nothing to eat or drink for three days. And beginning at verse 10, and it says, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. 
And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here am I, Lord. Oh, I wish we had some folks that say that today. Verse 11, So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is my chosen, chosen vessel of mine to hear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how many, how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, entered into the house, laid hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your precious word. God, I thank you for this time tonight. I thank you for each individual person that's here. But most of all, I thank you for your presence here tonight. And Lord, I ask you right now, as we've opened your word and we've read these precious words, God, I pray that our hearts would be opened. And God, that we, we want to hear from you tonight. And Lord, I pray you'd use me in any way you see fit, that it wouldn't be my words, but it'd be your words. And God, I ask you right now that hearts would be opened up and fertile ground would be exposed and God, seeds would be planted, seeds that have been planted to be watered and God, that you would give the increase tonight. And Lord, I pray that we'd be obedient to do what you tell us to do. And so Lord, have your way. Lord, I pray that we'd shut out everything that, hasn't, that doesn't have anything to do with you, that we would, we would listen to you that we would close off the thoughts of this old world and put them outside the door of this sanctuary for just a few moments. We want to hear from you tonight. Thank you for what you're going to do. And I ask this in the name that is above all names, Jesus. Amen. And you may be seated. So I ask you tonight, are you passionate about Jesus tonight? says that there was a certain disciple. Can I tell you that there are certain people sitting in this room tonight? You each have a name. You each look differently. You are a certain person. There was a certain disciple. God had chosen Ananias to go and to do a work. Now listen to me right here. There's a lot of you sitting out here that are chosen to do a work. There's a lot of us that are chosen. I never dreamed that I'd be standing in a pulpit preaching. I stuttered way too much. But God can take care of anything. He's looking for a willing vessel is what he's looking for. Something that will submit to him and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Ananias, when the Lord appeared to him in this vision and the Lord began to instruct him, there's a word that he said in this verse. He answered him. In verse 10, and the Lord said to him in a vision, called him by name, Ananias. And he said, here am I, Lord. Oh, so many times today, when, when, when we hear that voice, we don't answer it. We turn our backs on it and move away, say another time, another place. That's not me. Oh, you know, uh -uh. no, I heard my name, but I, I, that must have been my wife calling me. Wasn't God. A lot of times we hear God's voice and we disobey Him totally. We'll turn our backs on Him and we'll go the opposite direction and we'll, we'll run what He is telling us to do. And the shame of the thing is sometimes He's told us over and over and over and we still 
will run. But I want you to know something tonight. Because of this Ananias, a certain disciple, my friend, you ought to be thankful for Ananias. It had an effect on your life and my life. Because, by the way, we're of the Gentile descent. And so Ananias was sent to this place, to the street called Straight, to the house of Judas. And when God began the instructions that he called Saul of Tarsus, I'm sure Ananias in this vision as he responded back, Lord, you, you know who he is. Can I tell you the Lord knows each one of us? But I want to ask you, do you know? And he sent him, and he told him where to do, and he told him where to go. Isn't it neat that God has that kind of ability? He'll tell you what you need to do, and he'll even give you the wisdom to do it if you'll just listen to him. And he'll equip you. Do you know that God doesn't call the equipped? He equips the called. There's a lot of folks that say, oh, well, I can do that. That's no problem. Check their walk out. Check their talk out. But those that say, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And when we do it, not in our might, but in his might, that's when things begin to happen. So we find here that Ananias, he tells the Lord, he said, don't you know who he is? And the Lord said, yes, but he must suffer many things. And I, he's a chosen vessel. Do you know you're a chosen vessel? That song says, oh, he sought me and he bought me. You're a chosen person tonight. Ananias could have disobeyed God. But see, the Lord had already appeared to Saul and said a man by the name of Ananias was coming. Now I want to ask you, are you passionate about Jesus? Are you passionate about serving Him? Are you passionate about telling others about Him? What, what's your passion tonight? Folks that's passionate about a lot of things. There's a lot of folks that's passionate about fishing. There's a lot of folks that's passionate about hunting, golfing, cars, homes. They're passionate about everything else. And they'll do certain things and they'll, and they'll get so tied up into that passion that the whole world, they don't even know it's spinning. But I want to ask you tonight, are you passionate about Jesus Christ? Ananias was just going to go on a little road trip to a place that maybe was a little uncomfortable. I'm asking you, are you passionate? Because you might be going on a road trip. You might be going someplace and thinking, Lord, you want me to go there? You want me to do this for you? You want me to go pray for this individual? Do you know who he is? I'm afraid to say tonight in churches across this great country that we live in that there's many people that God has said, I want you to go and you need to pray for this individual that we say, another time, another day. And these people are left. because of our complacency. These people have never stepped completely in and I'm telling you we affect people that are around about us. You might think that you're, well I don't affect nobody because I, I just keep to myself and I do my own thing. You affect people. Ananias had an effect upon us tonight. He had an effect upon us because when he made his way and he began to go and he went to the street called straight and entered into the house of Judas. He went in and he, the Bible says that he laid his hands on brother Saul and said, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you said, I'd be here. How many people have we supposed to go on and minister to? Oh, it saddened my heart when the Lord began to put this on me. Uh, the other morning I... I was, uh, you might find this a little strange, I was in the kitchen, Pastor. I'd gotten up early, and Penny had fixed a lot of stuff the night before, and the kitchen So I felt compelled to do it. She didn't tell me to. I just had gotten up that morning, 
and I had a little quiet time. Hello, I encourage you. You need to spend some time with God. And, and, I, and I had my phone on, and it was reading the Bible to me, and I was over in the book of Acts. And that guy that reads on that Bible, man, uh, he just gets you right in the middle of where it's going on. And I began to hear this, and I began to listen to the, what was going on as I was washing those dishes. And God began to deal with me, and he said, I've got a place for you. This was before I talked to Brother Bob. And I began to think about this passage. And I began to think about all the people. Who have I missed that I was supposed to go pray for? I can recall one because I disobeyed God totally. I remember it to this day. When I sat in the driver's seat of that bus and I looked to the left side. This man standing out beside the pole at a truck stop smoking a cigarette that God said go talk to him. But I was too busy. Had places to go. Things to do. And I drove off. And I'm ashamed to tell you that I drove off. And I asked God, I said, give me one more chance to go back. I went back six months later when we were down there. And I asked the manager of that place that had been there, and I described the man to her. And she said, we've never had nobody that worked here that looked like that. I said, oh, yeah, he took the, the card, our fuel card, and he gave me my receipt, and he was very friendly. And he, he took a smoke break and walked outside there and was probably that's one of the poles and she said we've never had nobody I've been here for five years oh what did I miss that night what did I miss because I didn't listen to God what did I miss because I was too busy worrying about getting to the next place I'm asking you are you passionate tonight I'm afraid to say there's a lot of us that will say that we're passionate but we're really not we're really not when we get passionate about Jesus Christ, my friend, it, it, it don't matter. You're going to serve Him. You're going to do whatever you can. You're going to talk to whoever you can. It don't matter what they look like. It don't matter what place you're in. It doesn't matter because there's a burn that is inside of you because of what Jesus Christ did inside of me that I want to tell somebody what He's done and, how, and what He can do for them. Ananias. He went and he's laid his hands on Brother Saul. And if you finish reading that passage now, Saul had been praying and hadn't ate or drank in three days. Hadn't ate or drank in three days. And as Ananias prayed for him, the Bible says, like scales fell off of him and he received his sight. He said he took some nourishment it wasn't long that he entered into the synagogue and began to preach Jesus what would it be like what would it be like if God the person that God sent you to to go and pray and you got there and you begin to pray for him and a her or whoever it is and all of a sudden God does a miraculous work not because of you but because He's God and all of a sudden this person gets fired up for the Lord Jesus Christ and becomes a soul winner. It can happen. So are you passionate tonight? Are you passionate for Jesus? We've had the joy this year of going from East to West Coast a lot of miles, a lot of places. There's a lot of faces that we've seen. We've had the joy and the privilege of seeing 154 come to know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. That's not because of David or the Crusaders. That's because of Jesus Christ and Calvary is what that is. But there are faces that stick out in my mind Penny and I have been praying and we've been sharing about a, a man that we met at the reservation in Northern California, Brother John. Brother John's law. He's, he's off of the Yurok tribe on the reservation in a little village called Pequon in Northern California. Brother John came to church. We did Friday through Tuesday services and he was there four of them 
the next to the last one, the Lord impressed upon us at the end of the service. He sat at the back. He walked on these crutches that you put around your arm. He was eat up with diabetes very bad, had other complications as well. His ankles were about this big, and they were black from his knees down. He had a cast on one. He had had a knee surgery, and he was not in good health. And so I asked him, from the front, I said, Brother John, is it okay if we come pray for you? And he said, yes. So we went back there and we gathered around him and I knelt down beside him and I, and I looked him in the eyes and I said, Brother John, if you were to die, where would you spend eternity? And he looked at me and he said, and I said, don't you want to do something about it? And he said, no, I guess I'm okay tonight. Where's your passion at? Do you see a brother John in front of you? Do you, do you see somebody that has totally rejected Jesus and says, I think I'm okay? I said, do you understand if you die that you're going to open up your eyes in a devil's hell? And he said, yes, I do. My heart just sunk. It sunk. A young girl sat on the second row right here. She was probably in her, in her late 20s. During the service, she was weeping. At the invitation time, I saw her tuck her head, tears rolling down her face. She slipped up her hand and said that she had prayed and asked the Lord to save her. And I asked her to come forward and she shook her head, no. So I went to her and I said, what's holding you back? And she said, I'm not ready to commit. I said, you raised your hand. She said, I know, but she said, you don't understand. I said, I don't need to understand. She was dealing with guilt in her life. She was hooked on heroin, very prominent in the reservation, and alcohol. 600 people on that reservation, and they've had six suicides since January. That's not good odds, folks. Many that have are alcoholics, drug addicts. And I said, why is it that you won't accept Jesus? And she said, until I can sell out to him, I can't commit to him. And I said, let him bring you along. But you don't understand. I said, no, you don't understand. He'll for you. And he'll forgive you of your past if you'll accept him. Saul of Tarsus was one bad man, folks. He was in line to be the next great Pharisee. He was trained in the law. He didn't care if you were stoned to death. He cast his vote for folks to be stoned. He would laugh at you, call you a fool for believing in Jesus Christ, that the law, the law is the real thing. And if you call as he called them that were of the way. He would arrest them and bring them back to the chief priest in chains and shackles. Didn't matter what your name was. Didn't matter what you looked like. He was bad to the bone. But on the road to Damascus, isn't it something that even the worst individual that we call the worst individual that society has, my friend, when they meet Jesus, they call him Lord. They call him Lord. Saul of Tarsus, after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus, after Ananias came, laid hands upon him, and the scales fell off. Oh, Saul of Tarsus stepped into the pulpit and preached Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, there's some folks that 
we need to go lay our hands on them. And we need to pray. Because what if God has called them and they're waiting on that sign? And what if you're that one that's to, to deliver that sign? Well, Brother David, I've never done nothing like that. Uh, from what I take right here, I don't think Ananias had been to the, the street called Straight or the house of Judas. But because of what he did, by being obedient to God, because of his passionate for Jesus Christ, it says a certain disciple, so he was passionate about Jesus Christ and, and he wanted to do something for Jesus Christ and he listened to Jesus Christ and my friend if you will listen to Jesus Christ he will do something in your life do you know there's a lot of Saul of Tarsus waiting on folks just like us to come by and pray for them it might be that Somebody just shows them a little affection that there is love in this world that we show them the love of Christ that can change their life, that can set them free. Oh, but what if we say another time, another place? Another time and another place. I was with, with pastor that Last year we were back out in San Francisco and this pastor uh, out there, he said, man, I wish you had time to go to the reservation. And I said, well, let's go. He said, no, it's eight hours from here. And I said, well, maybe time. So we begin to plan and we begin to make preparation to go out there this a month ago. And as we made preparation, we got out there uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, back in May we had a new motor put in the bus and uh, so thought, man, everything's just going to be easy. Got a new motor, got good tires on the bus and everything's good to go and, and we get to the other side of Dallas headed to New Mexico to sing on a Monday night to do a service and can't keep the temperature down on it. So we had to travel at night most of the way until we got over into the valley of California and the temperature came down. And we get to the church and we ended up, we had to put a radiator in the bus sitting on the parking lot there. That's okay. It was all right. Got that took care of. We began to make plans to make our way on up to uh, Eureka to go to the reservation. We get about 90 miles out of Eureka. Universal joint goes out on the driveway. Well, we begin to make our way and get that checked out. And we went on to the reservation. And we come back out, got that changed. But along the way, there was those in church that said, "You don't need to go into that reservation. There's forest fires up there. What's going to happen if you get in there and that fire surrounds you?" What could be the worst thing that would happen? You die and go to heaven. Be with Jesus. I don't think that's too bad myself. Driving along through there, and there was a lot of forest fires. They, they was within 20, 30 miles. The smoke was coming in on us and all this kind of stuff. Got a drive shaft that's a shaking going down the road and wondering. And we just, and this one said, Well, why don't y'all just take my car and go in there? And I'm, her, her car would fit in the bay of the bus. That's how small it was. I said, Well, we have to carry our stuff in there and we have to, we're going to be sleeping in our bus. I said, Thank you. Well, that's a one lane road. You can't get it up through there. I'm from South Arkansas. I can get that bus down a dirt road now. And so we began to, we got there, we pulled up to the church. The bus was bigger than the church. But if I would have listened to everybody else, I would have never went and got the blessing getting to meet Brother John that we got to sow a seed into that it's not, it, all my job is is to sow the seed. It's up to God to give the increase. 
I'm just to be obedient to go where he says to go. I'd have never got to meet a little girl by the name Sequoia. Two years old. Grandma's raising her because her mama's a druggie in prison. Her dad's in a, a rehab center. Watch her come down the aisle and climb up in Penny's lap and sit down. This blood, faces, faces of people. Ananias saw the face of Saul of Tarsus. I'm sure today he'd tell you, oh, I remember that day. Because his life changed. And because of that day, Saul of Tarsus became Paul. And uh, the New Testament the books that Paul wrote, the walk that Paul had. Because of Ananias being faithful, told him to do. Do you understand? You said you were passionate, though. When you get passionate, you're going to do what God tells you to do. So would you be honest tonight? Would you be honest and say, well, I thought I was passionate. You come in here and blew that out of the water. I have work to do on my passion. I have work to do. It doesn't matter how many nights I stay on that bus. It doesn't matter how many miles I go. What matters is that face of Brother John. What matters is that girl sitting on the second row. What matters is you tonight. Because Jesus died for you and I. And he says to go ye therefore into all the lands. That's right here. First at home. Then to the city. Then to the next country. So are you passionate tonight? I'm going to ask you little self-examination tonight. Look into your, your heart. And I want to I want to stop here and I want to squash something before it got started. Satan will whisper in your ear and tell you, you're too old. You know you can't do that. You're not old enough to do that. He's supposed to do that, not you. Ananias said, Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. So I ask you tonight, are you ready to answer that? To get passionate about Jesus. See, it's Wednesday night. This is a good Wednesday night crowd. There's a lot of churches tonight across America that might have three or four. There's some that's got more. But they can be packed out tonight. But if they're not passionate about Jesus Christ, there ought to be. If we'll get passionate about Jesus Christ, our world this great country that we live in can be changed. We're going to slow down the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's in His timetable, not mine, not yours, but His. Oh, but wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wonderful? So, Lord, give us a little more time. I want to go tell my brother about you. Lord, I want to go tell my cousin. I want to go tell my best friend I went to school with. Whoever that person is tonight. I'm going to invite you that maybe if you don't have a passion, God, you ought to ask God for passion tonight. You ought to have a passion for the cross. 
as I said from the beginning, if you'll get passionate for the cross, you'll get compassion for the lost. Would you bow your heads tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you've never met Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I, I, I want you to know He's in the tonight. He's in the saving business, and I'm so thankful for that. And I, and I don't say that lightly either. I want you to understand that Jesus Christ loves you, He died for you, and that He will save you if you call upon His name. The Bible says, If you confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the mouth confessions made and with the heart man believeth. He is willing tonight. He is able tonight. He'll forgive you of whatever you've done, he'll, and He'll wipe those clean, the Bible says. Cast them as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. So tonight, what about you? Maybe you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you say, well... I just don't have that passion that I once had. Well, why don't you seek God's face and say, Lord, renew unto me that joy, that passion for the lost individual. Renew that again. That's what we need tonight. We need that renewed joy tonight, that strength. Maybe you're here tonight and God has spoken to you about doing something. Maybe he's told you to be Ananias and go pray for somebody and you've said, not me. Not me, Lord. You know, you know I can't do that. Yes, you can do that. So is that you tonight? Lord, I ask you right now as we stand at this moment in time, God, that you'd reveal unto us the people that you've told us to go to. God, the things that we need to do for you, God, that passion that we need to have for you in our life. Lord, I, I ask you, reveal to each one of us. Lord, I ask you to tonight, if there's one here, that's never met you as Lord and Savior, God, I pray that tonight, Lord, that they would call upon your name and be saved this very night. Lord, I pray for that individual that's sitting here that's just doubting. That's doubting that you are who you say you are. God, I pray that you would reveal who you are. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name. I'm going to invite you. If you need prayer tonight, we'd be glad to pray for you tonight. I, I, I don't know what you're going through. He does. That song that we sung, he said, I know. There's somebody that's sitting in here tonight that God has spoken to you about something and, and you just keep putting it off. Why don't, you, why don't you come and say, yes, Lord, here am I spoken to you and you know who you are and you keep rejecting him maybe you're here tonight and you've got a need maybe it's a, a physical need and you like prayer tonight I'd be honored to pray for you maybe it's something that's going through in your life and you'd like just prayer for it we'd be glad to pray for you whatever it is would you be obedient to do that tonight would you be obedient? Maybe you just want to come and spend some time up here at this altar. Right up here in this altar. Maybe God has placed an individual on your heart that needs prayer tonight. No better place to come than to lay it at this altar and say, Lord, it's yours. What are you going to do tonight with Jesus? What about that passion? Do you have that passion in your heart? 
when your grandkids and your great grand grandkids and your children look at you, do they see a passion in you? Are they, or do they just say, oh, they go to church over here? They ought to look at us and say that they, they're, my nanny is passionate about Jesus. My grandpa is passionate about Jesus. My mama, my dad is passionate about Jesus. You know who you are. Are you going to run some more? Are you going to run away from God again and not receive what He's got? It is, it is a blessing to pray for others. It is a blessing to share Jesus with others. But what is it tonight? it tonight
mighty God that we serve. What a mighty God. I'm thankful tonight that He hears us. He's not a foreigner, amen? And I, I just, I'm thankful tonight. Uh, I thank you all for allowing us to come and to worship with you. And uh, I know my heart is thrilled about what God is doing. And um, I want to share with you before I, Brother Bob comes. Um, I believe in sharing needs because we're all in the family, amen? If you know the Lord, you're my brother or my sister. And uh, God has placed it upon uh, our heart that we're going to go back to that reservation. I'm not for sure on the date. I know uh, I don't think it's going to be before the year's out, but we're going back for sure after the beginning of the year and try to stay three or four weeks working there at this church. This church has been without a pastor for 10 years. And um, it's... Uh, Church is called Watek Church. It's a Pentecostal Church of God, and they've been without a pastor because there's no electricity back there, and they don't want to. It's hard to get somebody to commit to go back there because it's different, and so we we want to go back and work there and do some more work, physical work on the place, and just to be able to minister to those people for a period of time. And so back there in the back, I, I put a box back there. There's a little treasure box. It has a Christian flag in it. And I'm going to ask you if you'd like to donate for that mission trip for us to go back out there. Uh, ask you to, I'm asking for a minimum of $20 and carry your flag with you. It's a Christian flag, and then I want you to proudly display that flag at your home. And if you would, just put that in, in, in that little treasure box back there, or whatever God places up on your heart. Uh, 20 is the minimum. Because we believe that God's going to do a great work out there. Uh, seeds that have been planted, and, and we just are feeling compelled to do this. And so I'm sharing that need with you. And uh, we have a need on our old bus out there. Um, I ended up, uh, I'm in need of two new front tires. Uh, we crossed the desert. It was 117 when we came across the desert. And evidently the belts have begun to separate in the front tires and so we we have that need and uh we're going after souls i'm going to go to the place called straight i'm going to enter into the house of judas if that's what the lord says and that's what we're going to do. so i ask you to be prayerfully mindful of that and um I, i'm so thankful that you've come out tonight and so uh we want to shake your hand before service is over with before you get away and uh, be praying for us as God continues. We'll be in Dequeen tomorrow night, um, and then uh, Monday be in Texacana. And uh, God is 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 doing a lot of things in our ministry and preparing us and getting us to to be able to go to different places and stay for extended periods of time. Uh, and like I said, it's a it's a great work. Pray that you'll get passionate about Jesus in your work and on your life. Did you enjoy the Crusaders tonight? <clears throat> I, um, I would imagine that you, uh, you, you folks have uh, sang and preached to pretty good-sized congregations. What do you think the biggest congregation you ever ministered to? A thousand people. That does not impress me, brother. That does not impress me at all. But what impresses me is that they told me about going to the reservation. When they got there, there was three people, three people. And they stayed four days. Was that right? Four services, four days. Okay, it would be five or six services there. Stayed that long and ended up, Brother Bob, having the last service, if I heard you right, 17 in that service. Now, that impresses me. That impresses me about a fellow that will go that far, eight-hour drive from where you were at, that far, to talk to a handful of folks. Hadn't had a pastor for 10 years, and there's no pastor in sight. So they're going back to 
work and all the time they were there they were, they were working all day long and then ministering at night now that impresses me it's, it's not very impressive to Brother Jackson to, to be able to go someplace where it's going to have a, a thousand people and uh, everybody jump in and have church with you when you go away you have a, a nice offering to hopefully with a thousand people of course I've seen some pretty good sized congregation didn't get didn't get much out of it anyway uh, there's some folks just not very passionate about uh, supporting the gospel eh? well, amen I've seen it here recently not very many folks passionate about giving to the gospel but God always has somebody that steps up to the plate takes care of business and uh, but that but that impresses me to go that far uh, I, I know I've went and preached and I didn't have to go far to do it but I knew when I went that there wasn't going to be many folks there I went and preached to a pastor his wife and their daughter there was three folks just outside of, outside of town but I went to have church and that's what I went for to have church and uh, so that impresses me that, that folks who serve God go as far as they go, do the things they do when there's really nothing in it for them whatsoever other than the touch of the Master's hand. Amen. But we're, we're going to ask you to give tonight in, in an offering, and, and uh, we want you to, to, and, and really, to really consider tonight that uh, we need to pray and ask the Lord, say, Lord, what would you have me to do? And uh, I've, al I've already, I've already shared the Lord on mine, and I've got mine right here on my, on my chest, and uh, I know what the Lord wants me to do, and uh, so you be prayerful tonight with what the Lord would like for you to do in the offering this evening. You've enjoyed this service tonight. Everybody enjoyed the singing, enjoyed the preaching. All right, Br Brother Nathaniel's no longer sister Carry, I mean Megan, come here. I've always, I'm always calling Megan Carry for some reason. I want you to receive this offering tonight for me, please. Father, we're thankful this evening, Lord, for the ministry of the Crusaders. We're thankful, Lord, that you come our way tonight, Lord, to minister to us. We ask God tonight, Lord, as we give, Lord, that you would just bless the offering, Lord, and bless those that have to give this evening lord and we ask god that you bless in an abundant way lord in jesus name amen amen go right ahead i get to collaborate while she's going around now isn't that wonderful amen of course the problem is i don't have anything else to say hallelujah do what a song on my heart <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I said, brother, uh, I don't think I got a song on my heart. Not at this, not at this point in time. I don't have one on my heart. I, if I could, I could, I could do like one fella did uh, some years ago. Went to Brother Ray Smith's church down here at Blackwell, <clears throat> and he and Brother Smith was not acquainted with him uh, very, very well, and so. Uh, he he, but he asked the pastor that night if he could sing a song, and the pastor said, "Well, sure, you you can sing if you like to sing." So he got up there, and this is what he jarred down on: Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. <laughs> so, <laughs> Amen. Uh, I like to ask folks to sing, but I want to know them before I ask them to sing. <laughs> Amen. It might not be might not be singing my my type of singing. Praise God. Well, I've had a good time in church tonight. Feel good inside my soul. Amen. I have a I have a passion for Jesus Christ. I know I do. Amen. I'm passionate about the things of God. I'd rather do something for Jesus than I would for anything else in this world. Amen. And I've I have redoubled my efforts in in seeking God and and praying about some things, and and uh, and the Lord is just uh, just touching my heart every every time I've, I've been coming here uh, to the church and seeking God, and and uh, also uh, adding my prayers, and and uh, and God is God is certainly working inside my spirit. 
And I believe tonight if, we, if we'll seek God with all of our hearts, I believe we, that God will be found of us tonight. Amen. And he will raise us up and he'll do wonderful, wonderful things with every one of us if we'll just have a passion for him and just reach out and, and want to do. Amen. Want to do what God's called us to do. All right. God bless you. Stand with us all over this sanctuary tonight. Thank you so much for your giving in the offering this evening. The Lord bless you for your service. Now, they do have the, uh, it's been mentioned already, the, uh, uh, what do you call that back there? You call it the product table. All right. I do have that out in the, in the entr entrance way there. And so if you want to stop by and, and uh, look at what they have and also uh, control mission trip that that all that's back there at the back so uh, the lord bless each one of you see you well, let's see ladies are going out to eat friday night is that right and and that's the dinner time is 5 30 